Today, I'm gonna to show you how I set up vocal tuning on my X32 using Live Professor on the computer and connecting it all with USB. We're gonna go over the routing, some of the tricks that I use to get you out of the pinch in a hurry, and how I kept things organized so that you don't get confused. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post new videos, because I'm here to help you eliminate sound distractions and make people sound their best. So come on over and let's take a look at how I set things up on the console. Oh, and if you've already subscribed, you may remember that I did a live stream of this a few weeks ago and it was totally awful quality. So I'm remaking it and making sure that you can actually see what's going on. So come on, let's take a look. Okay, so I've got trusty handheld microphone here. This is the worship leader's vocal mic. I say check one, two, and you can see it's coming in on the preamp over here. So this is where I adjust the main gain setting. And this is my backup as well. So I need more gain, I use it here. It's going from here through USB. We'll take a look at the routing. Uh, it's harder to see on here. Maybe we'll take a look on the computer. But this is going out USB. The USB is fed from this input channel over here to Live Professor, and then coming back from USB so that this channel's input is on user 25 through 32. If we go over here, we can see user for 25 through 32 is on card in. So our card inputs are what's feeding these input channels. So anything coming back from the computer is coming back and showing up here. Now I kept everything one-to-one. -one. So the output here going to the computer is 18. The input here is 26. That's the same back and forth. Now I have it set up so that these are going exactly the same way and they've got the same basic input processing on both of these over here for this group as I do over here for this group. So you can see they're pretty similar. Yes, there are gonna be changes because I don't update it every single time, but that's gonna sound pretty similar to this. That way you can have all your tuned inputs coming back and your tuned inputs, oh, yay, we're, you know, we've got great vocal pitch. But then the computer goes down. All you have to do, swipe this down, push these up, and the service continues. You don't have a catastrophic failure if the computer fails. Yes, they won't be tuned, but that's going to be much better than having these have no sound, running it on an insert, only having USB as your only option. That's a problem. The other cool thing is that these feed the P16's on stage. So if there's a you know singer that doesn't want to hear pitch correction, which I really don't want to feed them pitch correction, they don't have to hear it, right? Uh, the only tricky thing is that if you try to adjust gain or trim on here, if you've got too little or too much level coming back, that's gonna be a problem. You really need to adjust it over here. So I've run into that with people adjusting what they shouldn't have been adjusting, even though they thought they were solving the problem. And he had solved the symptom of, hey, I don't have enough over here, but it didn't really solve the problem at the right place. So we can have this one up and we can be getting signal and everything's hunky-dory. That's no tuning at all. That's what the singers are hearing. We can have the one returning from the computer and you can hear how it's going and you can hear the pitch changes. And you can turn the speed all the way up. So now I sound like T-Pain Auto Tune. That was all tuned to the wrong key, so I'm sure that sounded terrible. Now, what else sounds terrible is when you turn up both of them at the same time. And then you try to sing, and now you sound like a robot. And this is really awful, so that you're going to tell me to stop. Even if I change the note transition back to something, you know, passable, and the speed, and the auto-tune itself isn't making it weird, it still sounds really funny and coursey because we've got the two pitches going on at the same time. So I don't recommend doing that. There is some latency, but the latency isn't as big of a deal. You don't want to have both up at the same time. All right, here we are in Live Professor 2, and you can see I've got the vocal set up over here, and I've got Waves Tune Real Time as the only plugin in the chain. Over here, you can see I've got some global snapshots. I've got the Panic Snapshot, which just bypasses all of them so that if something's going wrong or something's in the wrong key, you don't know what key it is, double-click that, and you'll be okay. 
On Waves Tune, I've got these settings set up. You can see as I double click on the different, uh, the key changes for all the plugins, and that's gonna be the same across the board. It is a pain to update them if you wanna make a change to the speed and the note transition, because you've gotta recall each one, change it, hit update and save it again. That's kind of a pain, but it's the things we do for the love of tuned vocals. So I'm gonna close those. You can also see that I've got my cue list. You can go to edit mode and you can see, I put the name of the song and who's singing it. And then the key here, you can change which snapshot it will recall. Super handy, super helpful when you're in show mode. You don't have to think, oh wait, is this in A flat or is this in B flat? You just remember it you know, with the computer. Double click it, it turns blue, it's good to go. If you wanna go next, Green means it's loaded, hit it again. Now blue is going and you can see it changed keys. On the inputs and outputs though, you can look at it with the wire. So you can see, if I close this, you can see what's routed where. So we've got our audio inputs or audio cues, and those are routed into the input of the vocal one chain, vocal two, vocal three, vocal four, then the output of that chain is coming out one and it's going to 25 through 29. So that's the way that I set it up is, I set it up so that my patching is one to one so that I know what channel it's coming from. I can easily look on here. Oh, input one is input 18. So that I can say this one is coming in 18. That's where I know that it, it came from. So that if I need to adjust a preamp, if I'm seeing things are clipping, all right, my meters over here are getting a little too close to the red, then I can trim down that preamp. I know where it's coming from, and I know the console channel that it's going to. It's going to channel 26. So that's how I set all that up uh, with those different inputs and outputs. That's been really handy. So I hope this video is helpful for you guys. If you liked it, go ahead and let me know by dropping a comment down below. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, be sure to hit subscribe and ding the little bell so you can get notified every time I post a new video. As always, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.